Hello, my name is Craig Madden. I'm a proud Bundjalung Gadigal man from the Eora Nation. I'm here at Sydney University on Gadigal land. Jinyura Gadigal, this land is Gadigal. It's customary for Aboriginal people to invite guests or visitors onto our land or country. It's a custom that we've been doing for thousands of years. I'd like to pay my respects to our elders, past, present and emerging. To any visitors from any other nations or countries, to all our non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters, a warm and sincere welcome to Gadigal land, Aboriginal land. The Gadigal clan is one of 29 clans which make up the Euro Nation. It's a nation that's bound by three distinct landmarks. So we have the Hawkes River to the north, the Nepean River to the west, and the Georgia River to the south. Within the confines of those mighty rivers lie the Eora Nation, and the land of the Gadigal people that we stand on are one of the 29 clans of that nation. So on behalf of our Gadigal mob, I'd like to say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening all. That video was made in partnership with local Gadigal people of the Aura Nation in line with ancient customs and protocols. I would also like to pay my own respects and acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people. And while tonight we share new innovations here at the University of Sydney, may we pay respect to the first innovators of this land. So good evening all, my name is Ben Lindsay and welcome to Incubate Class 16's Demo Day. So tonight we have some esteemed guests here with us in the Great Hall at the University of Sydney. We have the Chancellor of the University of Sydney, we have the Vice-Chancellor the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research, the Pro-Vice-Chancellor of Research, Enterprise and Engagement, the Pro-Vice-Chancellor of Education, Enterprise and Engagement, and Vice-Provost for Academic Performance. We also have an esteemed array of mentors, of investors and leaders here from the Sydney and Australian startup communities. To officially open the event, we are honoured to have the Chancellor of the University of Sydney, Belinda Hutchinson, here in the Great Hall. Please join me in welcoming Belinda to the stage. Thanks, Ben. Is that working? Good. Thank you, Ben. And how good is it to be back in the Great Hall? Just fantastic. And this is one of my favourite events of the year. The Incubate program, I have been now at this university, I'm now in my ninth year, and this is the Incubate program's ninth year. So I sort of think we've sort of been married, and all the way through, I've just loved coming to this event. It's one of the most inspiring. And, and before I just go on, I do want to pay my respects to the Gadigal people and the land on which we're meeting today, the, the elders past, present, and emerging. And they have had a spirit of innovation and community building that we look to continue with programs like Incubate. It's amazing that we're now the 16th demo day. 16th, that's pretty incredible. And as we've seen this program grow, it has been wonderful because we've seen so many great businesses, so many startups that have gone on to huge success. And I do want to share with you just a few stats because I am from a finance background, I can't help myself. So let me just tell you a bit about some of the programs that we've had. When you think about it, we've now got 135 startups that we've accelerated, more than 500 jobs have been created, and more than $70 million of value has been created. So the other point that I thought was really great that the, that the program founders told me about was that 
34 countries have been represented by those who've been involved with this program. Now, that's just fantastic. It just shows the diversity of our campus. It shows the way we work together with people from wherever they are. So just a fantastic start. And I know for those, event, those programs that have been um, done this year and about to be presented, I know you've worked incredibly hard, and I've just had a wonderful opportunity with Martin to walk around and look at what you've been doing, hearing about each of your programs. I think they're fantastic. I hadn't, sadly, I couldn't go to all of you, but I did actually read the brochure beforehand, and it really is inspiring to hear the work you've done, and I'm sure you'll go on to huge success. And I just thought it would be really interesting to give you a little bit of light in terms of what some of our previous programs from last year have gone on to, which just shows you the possibilities, shows you that having been able to get to this stage, to be able to do a demo day, an incubate demo day, really sets you up for success. So last year, we heard from Victoria, from Relievables, about a startup that created software to help businesses track their sustainability efforts. And I just thought that was a really great program, so necessary today. And this went on, the Relievables went on to win the University of Sydney Genesis competition in 2020 and meet and reach the final nationals of the Entrepreneurship World Cup in 2020. Their very first client cont contract is now valued at $355,000, and they've even gone multinational. They're operating in Australia, the UK, and the US, and are in discussion with companies such as Unilever and Fujitsu. What an amazing track record in just one year. And the other one I really liked from last year was Tim and Will from Nook who created soundproof booths, complete with desks, electricity, whiteboard, and fans. What a better way to take on the challenges of working remotely with your own very soundproof booth in your own home. I thought it was just a terrific idea. And this team has gone on to real success too. So they won the Good Design Award in 2020, they earned $150,000 in revenue, and, and that was despite the impact of the COVID environment on office life. And they're now looking at a whole range of office furniture products and are going to launch them later this year. And they're in discussion with really large companies like ResMed and Optus to actually roll out their office products to those companies in, in, a, whole, in a whole scale way, which is just fantastic. So despite the challenges of last year, those teams and, and a number of the others have gone on to real success. And I know the teams tonight will go on to similar success. You know, the university wants to keep in touch with you. We want to hear about your success. We want to continue to support you. And I just want to say the team at the university who work on this program, the Incubate team, are one of my favorite teams because they do such a great job. But also the Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and his team do a wonderful job supporting them. I also have to call out the wonderful industry partners we have and others from the venture capital area that support us too. You do an amazing job. You donate your time. You work with our teams. You mentor them. You give them great ideas. You take their products and ideas to a whole new level. And we're incredibly grateful for that time and effort that you put in to our students and our staff. It is just fantastic. So I really did want to call out Natasha Rowlings from Uniseed and Mike Nichols from Main Sequence Ventures who are here with us tonight. But there are so many others who work with us across the year and have worked with us for many years on this program. Please stay with us. We're having great success, but you are what helps us have that success. So to all the finalists here tonight and who are about to do the presentations, best of luck for the future. I know you will go on to, to huge success. I can just see it. And if it's not in the particular venture you're in now, because we all know how venture capital works, you might not succeed in the first one, but it may be the second one or even the third one. So stick with it. That's the way to go. And you know we, we're always here to support you. Sadly, I have to leave to go to another um, commitment, a university commitment, so I won't be able to stay for the presentations, but I, 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 having had read the brochure, I know they're all um, really great ideas, and, and as I said, I wish you every possible success. Thanks very much for having me tonight.
Thank you very much, Belinda. So tonight is a special night. Tonight we're here celebrating innovation at the University of Sydney and incubate Class 16's 10 startups. Now these 10 startups come from a diverse range of backgrounds. There's three research teams and four of the teams have female founders. Now they're not just here to pitch to you all tonight, if you're here in person, please make sure you network with them after, grill them ask, them, ask them some tough questions. For those of you online watching in the live stream, you'll have links sent to you in between each pitch. If you would like to join the conversation on socials, please make sure you tag at Sydney Incubate and hashtag Sydney Incubate. Enough of me. Let's get started with the 10 startups. Our first team is comprised of two co-founders with over 25 years of small to large business experience. And if I'm honest, I think their product should be in every school, every university, and every office space here in Australia. Please welcome Dean from Pixie. Hi, I'm Dean, co-founder of Pixie, a social enterprise here to prevent period panic. What does that mean? We're solving that moment of panic when a menstruating person needs a pad or tampon and one is not available. That's right, I'm a guy up here to talk to you about periods. Let's move on. Here is a screenshot from the website of Libra, leading period product brand in Australia. Their advice to young people caught out without one of these products if you don't have anyone to lean on, roll up some toilet paper into your undies. Really? Is that the best that we can do? When my wife and co-founder first told me about this issue, I couldn't believe it. It affects her, it affects every woman she knows, and it turns out that 86% of women report having been caught out before. But having, to talk, having talked to hundreds of them over the last few months, we think it might be closer to 100%. If anything at all is provided, it usually looks like this. Big, bulky, rusty, requires electricity, requires maintenance, or worse, requires a dollar coin. Who even carries those anymore? Toilet paper is freely available. Soap is freely available. Why is this any different? With Pixie, it's not. Simple dispensers, no, el no electricity, no maintenance, free period products where they're needed. Easy. However, that's not enough for us. Why? Because this is what goes to landfill from a single packet of consumer tampons. There are multiple types of plastic in the packaging and the product, and this will take 500 years in landfill to even begin to degrade. This is a huge problem because the average menstruating person will go through 11,000 of these in their lifetime, meaning that worldwide we go through 45 billion period products per year. Pixie did not want to contribute to this, so we're different. We provide only 100% organic cotton products wrapped in either recyclable paper or a plant-based biofilm. The whole lot, packaging and product, biodegrades in five years or less, not 500. We ship with biofuel, we deliver carbon neutrally, plus we're a certified social enterprise because we donate 50% of our profits to One Girl, a charity fighting the fact that 130 million girls around the world are denied an education. Our competitors include Share the Dignity and Libra, both of which still have machines that require electricity maintenance or both, and have products full of plastic. Plus, one is a charity reliant on donations of product and money and volunteer labor. So really, our biggest competitor is inertia. However, we're beginning to overcome this already, with Pixie available in 13 sites across five states, across a diverse range of clients, including offices, schools, and gyms. The impact that providing this stuff can have is profound. We get heartfelt handwritten notes like this for solving that moment of period panic. And we've done this more than 14,000 times so far. We even had the students at a school cheer when Pixie was installed. 
What do you as a school or workplace get for providing this? You get a better employee experience, increased attendance, better educational outcomes, and you're solving a moment of anxiety for your people. You can get all of this for $5 per person per year. That's the average cost to our clients. So why now? Well, here are some of the states throughout Australia that are already supporting this move. Plus, New Zealand, France, the UK, Ireland, and 15 states throughout the US. All these places have already legislated some form of free provision of period products in schools, universities, or public buildings. This is Pixie, me and my wife and co-founder Nina, more than 25 years combined experience, a few other runs on the board, but most importantly, a shared passion for gender equality and sustainability. So how can you help us? We'd love introductions to forward-thinking businesses and schools, especially to people in the roles you see on the screen behind you. Help us prevent period panic. Pixie, gender equality in bathrooms, sustainably, while giving back. Prevent period panic, and let's move on from toilet paper in undies as a solution. Well done, Dean. That is a fantastic product. There are some hard workers behind that brand, and I think they have an amazing vision. Up next, we have our first Sydney Knowledge Hub sponsored startup ever to go through Incubate. Brown from Nurgen is a biomedical engineering school, uh, pardon me, is a PhD student at the biomedical engineering school at the University of Sydney, and he is here to show you his prototype and his product and his vision. Please welcome Brown from Nurgen. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brown, founder of Nurgen. Everyone, please raise your hand and follow me. Grasp your hand and now open it. How did it feel? Very easy task, right? But if you had a stroke, part of the brain is damaged. When you think to grasp, nothing happens. And this just happened around us. Imagine one of us in this hall may have a stroke in our lifetime. Recovery from a stroke is always a prolonged process and some victims never get rid of this acquired disability. A study shows after six months of rehabilitation, 60% of patients still cannot achieve daily life independence. So is there a way to improve stroke rehab? Introducing nudging, we have a medical device that can sync the intended hand movement from the brain to the muscles directly this will accelerate post-stroke rehabilitation. This is what I am working on. I was opening my right hand, and Nurgin's prototype is opening Ben's hand. So this is because our prototype is copying my hand movement from my mind and paste it to Ben's hand. OK, this copy and paste game is fun. But how this will help post-stroke patients? Currently, in a rehab, the physios will manipulate the patient's hand and try to ask them, think about it, to match their thought. This, unfortunately, takes several months, even several years, to help them regain the lost mobility. With neurogen, things is different because the patient can feel and can see the movement when they think about it, so the brain has a better connection to relearn the lost ability much faster. A study shows with this synchronized feedback, the rehab time can be shortened up to one third, and it has helped some patient who was feared in the traditional rehab regained their function in just four months. We are not the only one trying to accelerate rehabilitation by providing a feedback. We can see some companies are providing tactile feedback, 
and some companies are providing visual feedback. Our unique advantage including we providing both, and the movement is generated by the patient's own muscle. So during the tie, the patient do not have mobility. They will not lose too much muscles. And our device is portable and easy to set up so the patient can loan the device to hold to save the time and the cost on frequently traveling to a rehab center. Hand rehab is just a start for nerding. We will expand our solution to other motor functions as well in the future. We are now raising 400,000 seed funding to bring our technology to preclinical trial stage. And we are seeking connections to rehab centers. And I am looking for a business co-founder who has strong business skill and want to join me on my journey. We hope in the future we can help post-stroke patients back to a normal life much faster, easier, and cost less. Thank you, everyone. So well done, Brown, and thank you, Sydney Knowledge Hub, for sponsoring Nurgen. So how amazing was that video? I would like to reiterate that my hand opened without thinking it, and all I felt was a small tickle down my arm. I don't know how many of you have had your hands opened by someone else's mind. <laughs> our next startup is here on a mission to keep our leaders honest. Coming from an extensive background in tech, please welcome Nick from Ballot Box to the stage. Worldwide, democracy is facing some serious challenges. With a rise in polarization, uh, rise in polarization, mistrust in our leaders and activist organizations. It is all too easy to give into tribalism, to believe fake news and to live in your own echo chamber. My name is Nick Essie, I'm a co-founder at Ballot Box and I'm also a politics tragic. Australians on average go to the polls every year and a half, but that's not where the majority of democracy takes place in our lives. We will all be members of organisations that run internal elections, whether it be your local netball club, professional association, or trade union. At Ballot Box, our mission is to help people engage in democracy wherever it takes place. We have launched a smartphone app that helps people be informed in any election. Open the app and you can interact with the opinions of politicians, corporations, and public figures. The app's designed to be fun to use, but it's not all just thumbs up and hearts. If you have a bone to pick and you're upset, we want you on the app. Ballot Box is a place where the full spectrum of political thought is represented. It is the opposite of an echo chamber. But that is not the only problem being solved here. As a candidate, getting your message out in front of voters is difficult and expensive. We help candidates by setting up their profiles and publishing their stances. We deliver undecided voters right to their door. So, who are our customers? We start by targeting the 47 trade unions that represent 1.5 million Australians. We set them up with a private section of the app to help them run their internal elections and engage with their members. Once we have found traction in this primary market, we will leverage the user's gain to kickstart growth into our secondary market. And that is the 6,300 elected officials and the over 25,000 other candidates that run for political office. Our customers will gain significant political insight for a much lower cost than traditional polling. Ultimately, we are looking to disrupt the market research industry worth $2.8 billion and that's just here in Australia. We have launched the app in two real-world elections, one at the Queensland state and one at a federal by-election. Eight politicians set up their policies and profile. 
we achieved 300 app downloads and collected over 4,000 data points. And we even made Channel 7 News Toowoomba. Myself and Patrick are both technical co-founders with experience in high growth startups. Patrick has worked in interactive TV polling, and I have a political science degree from here at Sydney Uni. We pride ourselves on being apolitical, and we have experience in sales, product management, and engineering. We know what it takes to build a successful software company. So our ask for tonight from you, the audience, is to download the app and give it a go. You'll find a card in the app to give me feedback on this pitch, and I'd really like your opinion. Ballotbox has been bootstrapped up until this point, and I'm committed to working full time on the business. It is with that in mind that we are looking to raise $500,000 to give us runway for the next 24 months. With these funds, we will continue to develop the product, we will sign our first 100 private organizations, and we will grow our user base to 250,000. At Ballotbox, our mission is to help people engage in democracy wherever it takes place. So well done, Nick. So those two balance full-time jobs and small families to get Ballot Box up and running. So I'm pretty excited to see how Nick goes now he's committing full-time. If any of you here in the audience or online know a private organization that might benefit from Ballot Box, please talk to them at the demo booth or arrange a one-on-one -on -one with them via the link. So our next startup is a solo founder and his tech he built entirely through Incubate. He came in with just an idea, and what you see tonight he built over the last 14 weeks. Please welcome Mikhail from Newsplay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mikhail Edwin, and I'm the founder of Newsplay. Because of products like Twitter, Medium, and Substacks, many people are becoming aware of how good independent reporting and journalism is. For those of you who do not know, it's become really, really good. But this has led to the problem where there's a massive influx of articles and blogs all around the world. But what's the point, ladies and gentlemen? What's the point in those three million daily articles when Google tells us that the upcoming generation wants to consume information in an audiovisual format? Trends show that they just don't want to read anymore. In fact, even human psychology supports by saying that people processed and retained information better by over 40% when it came to just reading or listening for that matter. So how do we solve this? How do you give the upcoming generation news on what they want, when they want, how they want? Presenting Newsplay. So Newsplay is a streaming service that delivers you hyper-personalized and localized news by a digital, artificially intelligent newscaster. Let me show you how this works. Hey, Sam. Good evening, Mikhail. How can I help you today? I'm good, Sam. I call him Sam, by the way. Um, so could you tell me what happened with Chelsea last time? Sure, Mikhail. Thomas Tuchel's club record 14-game unbeaten start at Chelsea came to an end when his side suffered a shock home defeat against relegation-threatened opponents. The Blues played most of the game with 10 men after a first-half sending off I keep tweeting at them to let Tammy Abraham play front, but they just don't listen. Um, now let's do what? Let's check my bitcoins. But Sam, do me a favor and say it in Mandarin for my Chinese friends in the audience, please. Bitcoin在经历大规模抛售，在过去的二十四小时内下跌了近百分之十五，这是自二月份以来最大的盘中跌幅. I'm down fifteen percent. When it when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? Now let me tell you what's happening under the hood. What we very simply do is we take those written articles as you saw before, upload them to the newspaper portal, which then processes the information, and then spits it out in the format everybody loves and wants. In return for those written articles, we pay our contributors 25 to 45% of the revenue we earn through advertisements, a model that is successful and widely popular around the world. But you might still ask, Mikhail, why advertisements? Well, at Newsplay, we believe in the freedom of information, and a paywall would unfortunately break that. 
It also helps in our favor that Austrians are now preferring impartial and independent news as we see a rise in news consumption. In regards to attraction, we are proud to now report that we came to incubate with just an idea. We have now built and validated our MVP, which gives our way cryptocurrency news in English. Feel free to check this out on our website. We're also proud to announce that we have 65 beta users, along with three journalists who contribute to our platform. That's me. I'm a solo founder who has built this application with a team of friends. In regards to our ask tonight, we are firstly seeking $250,000 worth of pre-seed capital to help us go to market. We're currently scheduled to launch globally in English, Mandarin, Hindi, and Arabic later this year. This is how we plan to use our funds in the next 12 months. Feel free to come to my booth and ask for a more detailed answer. We're also searching for a technical co-founder, along with any support and guidance the startup community has to offer. We are all ears. Now, before you write us off as just another news app, let me tell you why you're going to hand me a check the next time you guys see me. What you're actually investing in is in that bad boy over there. What we are trying to do through Newsplay is position ourselves to be the leaders in digital humanoid services. Normally, people tend to ask, Mikhail, does your tech scale? Of course it does. But at Newsplay, we are focused on something much bigger. At Newsplay, we are focused on scaling human potential. That's my time. Thank you for listening to me. It's been an absolute pleasure. So well done, Mikhail. Just to reiterate, he didn't say this, but he completely self-taught himself, uh, he taught himself how to build an animatronic AI news anchor from scratch. And I think that's pretty impressive. Up next, we have a founder who's turned her passion into a business. Now, there's only one way to describe Serena, and it's hustler. And I hate that word. But I don't know how you describe someone who picks up the phone every day while organizing champagne evenings for influencers and attending markets at Bondi, maybe Paddington, you'll have to verify it with her, out at Rouse Hill, all around Sydney, all the while organizing an international supply chain. Please welcome Serena from Kobe to the stage. I'm obsessed. I can recommend it greatly. Unique with an ethical background. I'm Serena, the founder of Kobe, and this is real feedback from paying customers in response to our premium cork handbags. One loyal customer has individually purchased four handbags and pre-ordered a wallet. So why did they choose Kobe? Our unique eye-catching designs, Portuguese craftsmanship and brand values, people, planet and quality. But here's the kicker. Kobe handbags are made from cork. Cork trees are stripped, not cut down during harvesting, absorbing up to five times more CO2 as the cork regenerates. They're durable, three times lighter than leather, kind to animals, and stain and water resistant. Plus, Kobe is committed to planting a cork tree for every purchase. We have purposely positioned ourselves as a mid-range brand because there is no other brand in Australia providing cork handbags of this quality and level of design. We outcompete our rivals based on our European craftsmanship. Our largest cork bag competitor is La Fleur Paris, which is misleading because they make their bags in China but sell them at the same price point as us. We have exclusive Portuguese manufacturing, which I established when I traveled there. What differentiates us within the cork handbag niche? Our plans for modular design in the form of interchangeable flaps and handles. This links to our environmental sensitivity as the customers perceive the bags as investment pieces, whilst allowing us to upsell and increase our repurchase rate. 
there is an increasing demand for vegan and eco-friendly handbags. But Kobe's vision isn't not only to be the leading sustainable handbag brand globally, we're making cork handbags mainstream because the global handbag market is growing by 6.8% each year, with 53% of shoppers willing to pay more for products that are sustainable and ethical. The first country we aim to target internationally is India, due to its large vegetarian and Hindu population. The trend for purpose-led purchasing is greater in emerging economies than developed markets. Traction to date. One in four online purchases are repeat customers. We have over $17,000 in revenue and have had zero returns. We've expanded our product range to include cork wallets for women and men. So if you'd like to join the Kobe community, jump onto kobe.com .au, and for the next 48 hours, you can use the discount code INCUBATE to receive 20% off your purchase. They say money doesn't grow on trees, but it does when you invest in Kobe's premium cork accessories. Thank you, Ben. So well done, Serena. So Mother's Day this weekend, if you're as useless as me at buying your mum a gift and you've left it this late, there is no better opportunity. Up next, we have our second research team for the night, Codex Research. Codex Research is led by Ed, an honorary associate in the discipline of physiology in the School of Medical Sciences in the Faculty of Medicine and Health. Please welcome Ed to the stage. Thanks, Ben. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ed from Codex Research. So here we are in the third decade of the 21st century, and of course, we have found cures for all the major diseases, right? What? Why not? What's happened? Well, it doesn't help that current medical research methods are really little more than tweaks of techniques we've been using for hundreds, even thousands of years. And we have learned a lot using these techniques. But as we discover the real complexity of human biology and try to explore personalised medicine, we really need a new way to do biomedical research. Think of cells in a petri dish as a 2D experiment. The cells are aware they're in a foreign environment and often behave very differently than the cells in your body. Recently, researchers have been working on 3D techniques usually involving bioprinters or clumps of cells called organoids. This isn't good enough. The human body is a 4D environment. Many types of cells in complex 3D structures, plus the dynamic pulsing, pressure, flow, and mechanical stress that your cells experience. Animal studies do provide this dynamic environment, but these studies are expensive, they're slow, they're ethically objectionable, and increasingly irrelevant. 92% of drug trials that succeed in mice fail in humans, reflecting just how poorly we really understand human biology. Codex Research is developing a new technology that will better mimic the human body, allow us to do away with animal experiments, and is easy to use and cost effective. Our tech involves incorporating a smart pump system with a tissue-like scaffold within which we can grow human cells in a realistic environment under pressure and flow, just like the cells in your body. These cells can be generic for basic research or cells from a patient for truly personalised medicine. With the help of $2.5 million of government funding, we have achieved proof-of-concept lab results that clearly go beyond anything that can be replicated in a Petri dish. In our lab prototypes, we have grown smooth muscle, fibroblast and endothelial cells in combinations that look like human arteries and shown that they begin to produce collagen. Grown clusters of cancer cells, a starting point for research into secondary tumour formation. And observed spontaneous self-assembly of cells into channels within our scaffolds, a basis for researching angiogenesis. This is currently a fundamental roadblock 
to the development of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Our technology will allow researchers to push back the boundaries of what we know about human biology and move the needle on that list of diseases that we know how to cure. We do have competitors. Their devices are expensive and difficult to use and none can accurately replicate pressure and flow conditions found in actual human patients. Our business model includes hardware, but also, importantly, the sale of consumables. We aim to capture 5% of a $14 billion market by 2030. The advantages of 4D technology over other forms of cell culture and animal experiments will drive rapid growth in this market for many years. We are a group of passionate scientists and engineers dedicated to developing this technology. The team at the Charles Perkins Centre, our primary workspace just up the road on the Camperdown campus. My key people, Dr Stephanie Helder and Pearl Lee, and our close academic collaborators in bioscience, Associate Professor Steve Wise and Drs Anna Waterhouse and Yelena uh, renyak Kovacina. I have devoted 10 years of my life and invested more than a million dollars of my own savings in this venture. I have been working with and funding our academic collaborators for seven years. We began developing the actual technology three years ago, amalgamating earlier work done by myself, my teammates and the academics over the last decade. We are in this for the long haul. To advance our project, we're looking for $1 million in funding and a COO, a CTO and a CMO to join our team. Thank you. So well done, Ed, from Codex Research. Up next, we have Nadia from A Change Study. Now, Nadia is the leading migration expert here in Australia for Russian-speaking students, but that wasn't enough for her. She has turbocharged her previous agency and is here tonight pitching the result, a change study. Please welcome Nadia to the stage. Hi, my name is Nadia, and I'm the founder of a change study. I've been running my successful immigration agency for the last eight years. And we are disrupting the international education sector here. 50. 50. For many of you, just a number. For a change study, 50 lives have been impacted through the work we have done just in three months. The faces you see here are the faces of dreamers, nurses, doctors, engineers. They dream to have a world-class education that they do not have back home. And why is that? Trying to study here in Australia is hard, believe me. I'm a former international student from Ukraine. There is an 11-step process full of forms, form after form, form. There are unregistered providers who take advantage of that and provide false information to students. On top of that, this isn't even something simple as website which compares all education providers in one place. It is so bad that 48% of students do not proceed with their applications. And you would think that for an industry worth $37.5 billion, this is the problem worth solving. Introducing a change study. A change study is a trustworthy marketplace built by registered migration agents. We have taken the four most complex forms in the process and condensed them into one which makes the process significantly quicker for both agents and students. We align courses with individual migration goals. We organize health cover. We facilitate the enrollment. We look after the migration process all in one place. Let me show how easy a change study makes enrollment by giving you an example of a recent student we helped. Her name is Anna. So Anna came just to one website, achangestudy.com.au. She compared the courses using our search function. 
she completed just one form had her free consultation. And as easy as that, she now is enrolled with the University of Wollongong. For students like Anna, we have 98% success rate. Since being with Incubate, we had a great traction. We had 3,000 email sign-ups. I was on SBS Russian radio. We had huge social cover. 18 education providers signed up to list their programs. But more than that, there are 50 students who now have access to that kind of life that will empower them to have the life they wish. With average international student paying $24,000 in tuition fees, we make $2,073 per year this study. We aim to reach $2.4 million in revenue by 2022. Our primary market is made up of Russian-speaking students. This market is worth $5.8 million. Our secondary markets are the Philippines and Malaysia, because these are fast-growing markets. They are relatively untouched, having a combined annual growth of 27%. But more than that, we have a network of agents there. Our main competitors are education agents and migration agents. Let's assume they have the same success rate as us. But we can process four students for every one of this thanks to our streamlined process. Also, we can definitely guarantee that we know the process. So why should we, why should we compete with them? We should hire them. Our team is comprised of leaders in immigration law, network engineering, software engineering, and marketing. But more than that, we have a deep understanding of Russian-speaking population looking to study here in Australia. As Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. If you want to learn more about the change study, please be involved with us. Thank you. Well done, Nadia. Now, if you know anyone that Nadia should connect with, please talk to her at her demo day booth, or if you're online, book a meeting with her via the link. Up next, we have an exceptional startup. In the last six months, they turned their idea into Australia's largest marketplace for extracurricular activities for kids. This is for all the parents in the room. Please welcome David from Kid Campus. Hi, I'm David, the co-founder of Kid Campus, Australia's largest online marketplace where you can book activities for your kids. Already, we've sold almost $100,000 worth of programs through the site. I'm willing to bet that everyone in this room has been involved in some sort of extracurricular activity at some point in their childhood. For me, it was saxophone. For my co-founder, Josh, it was science camps. But it could be anything, sport, tutoring, art, the list is endless. In fact, many studies show that the activities kids do outside of school are critical to their growth and development. So why is the industry such a mess? If you're a parent who's been involved in booking activities for your kids, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about tedious forms, long annoying phone calls, confusing websites. It makes booking activities for your kids a chore instead of a pleasure. How do I know this? Well, before founding Kid Campus, Josh and I ran kids' activities for five years. Here's Josh with one of the many classes that we ran. In that time, we spoke to thousands of parents, and these issues kept coming up. They thanked us for having easy booking systems, but we're software developers. Most people aren't. Our solution? Kid Campus. On the Kid Campus marketplace, you can find, compare, and book thousands of programs in Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Perth with just two clicks. We take a 10% commission from the provider sales, and for the parents, we cut out the endless Google searching, our UI is simple and intuitive, and we already have the largest range in Australia. Do you want to book a tech camp? Done. How about sports coaching? Sorted. We want to make it as easy as possible to bring these activities to your kids. And this isn't a small industry either. 
In the past three years, the New South Wales government alone has invested $300 million in the active and creative kids' voucher programs, which allow parents discounted vouchers for extracurricular activities. So far, there are 20,000 providers registered for these initiatives, and almost 2 million families have taken advantage of these vouchers. Since our inception in August of 2020, as I said earlier, we've already sold almost $100,000 worth of programs. Behind me, you can see our ticket sales in the last three school holidays. Since day one, we have shown that Kid Campus is a website that parents want to use. We only have one domestic marketplace competitor. They started six months before us, and as you can see, we already have a much larger range than them. We're partnered with 150 of these providers all around Australia, delivering these activities to your kids. So, why us? Well, other than having five years of industry experience, Josh and I have a skill set that most people don't. Josh has been marketing to parents, selling kids activities for six years, and I live and breathe sales. And for us, this is just the beginning. We've started with the Kid Campus Marketplace. Next, we want to build an app for parents, which allows them to schedule and organize their kids' activities with their friends and family, a huge pain point, which I'm sure some of you are really aware of. And lastly, we want to create a platform that allows these providers to run their whole business with Kid Campus tools. Josh and I want to capture the whole vertical of the industry. So, if you're a parent which is looking for an exciting new activity for your kids, scan our QR code, sign up for our mailing list, and be the first to hear about the thousands of activities that we'll be offering. If you're looking to work with us, we're hoping to raise $500,000 so that over the next 18 months, we can work full time to aggressively scale up our customer acquisition strategies. We have the platform, we have the suppliers, we have the vision. Now we just need to get the word out so that every parent in Australia knows with Kid Campus, you can book activities for your kids easier than ever. Thank you. Well done, David. If you're a parent, make sure you head over to the booth and scan that QR code. And just to highlight, particularly for Mike Nichols in the room, uh, when David says he lives and breathes sales, he was doing 250 to 300 calls to suppliers every single week of the program. I think that's something even Mike would be proud of. <laughs> Up next, our second last startup. I'm going to leave it with one line. I think this is a game changer for e-commerce stores. Please welcome, from Refunded, Judd. Buy Now Pay Later services have revolutionized payments in the online marketplace, yet under the surface remains an untapped part of a shopper's life cycle. Refunds. Did you know it takes two to four weeks for a customer to receive their refund? Yet 72% expect their money in under five days. Where is the innovation in this $9 billion industry? My name is Jad, and I'm a co-founder at Refunded, a global-first fintech solution providing e-commerce customers instant refunds for their online returns. No more waiting weeks for your money. Refunded gets your refund in your pocket in under 30 seconds. So how does Refunded work? First and foremost, a customer lodges a return and is paid instantly. Next, the customer ships their items. And finally, we allow merchants up to three weeks to accept or decline the return and repay us. To illustrate, Consider payment gateways, PayPal, and Afterpay. Where Refunded places itself is the world's first refund gateway, providing customers the option to get their refund instantly. As a result, our primary revenue stream is a small 2.5% transaction fee paid either by the customer or the merchant. Annualized, this corresponds to an extraordinary 90% effective interest rate. The sooner customers get their money, the sooner they spend it. While obviously a product loved by e-commerce customers, 
Refunded is engineered to improve retention and sales for stores. This is supported by studies out of MIT and Harvard, suggesting that returners have a 260% longer retention rate and generate seven times more in gross sales than non-returners. A completely free product that places absolutely no risk of faulty returns on the retailer means Refunded is the obvious choice to improve customer retention and brand loyalty for stores. Timing is everything, and now is the optimum moment for Refunded for three key reasons. Firstly, we are a global first innovation, meaning we have the power to start an industry-wide craze. Number two, thanks to the deployment of the new payments platform in 2018, Refunded is only now able to achieve its value proposition of paying refunds instantly. And number three, driven by COVID-19, e-commerce is on the rise, skyrocketing to 21.3% of total retail, meaning the importance of refunds in the online marketplace is only increasing. Refunded launched in mid, in, in mid-2021, and today is live in five stores. We are in sustained discussions with some of Australia's most well-known brands, and thanks to receiving the New South Wales MVP grant, have scaled our technology to Shopify, big commerce, and custom-built e-commerce platforms. Refunded has come to fruition by a talented team of four, plus a network of incredibly experienced advisors. Together, we have the technical abilities, network, passion, and drive to scale our business to become a globally recognized brand. And yes, we have massive ambitions. Based off our current sales pipeline, we predict to onboard 10 stores within the next three months, a further 15 in the following three months, and have 100 stores by mid-2022. More exciting is our confidence to scale internationally. The overwhelming interest for refunded in the $400 billion US market highlights the massive potential for our brand. Tonight, my team and I have two asks. Firstly, we want to grow fast, and warm leads are better than cold ones, so any connections in the retail industry provide enormous value. And number two, we are looking for seed capital to expand our team and increase our outreach. So, if you would like to be part of a simple and elegant fintech solution that has the power to change e-commerce, come chat with us. So well done, Judd, and the refunded team. Now I'm going to tell you a story, and my partner's going to kill me. When I told her about refunded, her eyes lit up. The amount of times I've seen her buy three pairs of shoes to pick one, and the amount of time she spent weeks without money, she's been pestering me to get this on her favorite sites. So up next, we have our last startup and our last research team. Thanks to a collaboration from the School of Chemistry, the School of Physics, and the University of Sydney Nano Institute, this team have done something quite magical. Please welcome to the stage from Aqua, Ming. Hi, my name is Ming from Aqua. I'm going to show you how we get water from air. Water is the new oil. Water is the new gold. That's what we've been told. In fact, five out of 11 regions around the world are classified as water stressed. This means 1.4 billion people, nearly 20% of the global population, do not have access to clean drinking water. This results in almost half a million deaths every single year. And the situation of water scarcity is only going to get worse due to climate change. Water desalination plants are the modern solution to water scarcity. However, they are expensive to build and they consume huge amount of energy, making them not affordable for developing countries. We have several desal plants in Australia, 
but they are only limited around the coastal areas, not helping anywhere else. What if we can get water from something as simple as a coat of paint? Introducing aqua, advanced capture of water from the atmosphere. Aqua is a nanostructured material that can be painted on any sky-facing surface and turn them immediately into a water-generating surface. Aqua requires no energy input for operations, involves no moving parts, it collects water right on spot where it's needed, and it functions 24-7. And these features differentiate Aqua from other air-to-water technologies, which are either energy-intensive or work only over a limited time in a day. Behind Aqua, we are a team of world-class scientists with expertise on surface science, physics, and paint chemistry. Together, we are the first group of researchers in the world to combine the most advanced technology in the field of chemistry and physics to realize this sustainable air-to-water application. We have successfully demonstrated proof-of-concept experiment in the laboratory. And this aqua painted surface is harvesting water at an amazing rate of 2.5 liter per square meter per day. We are also doing outdoor tests with the aim of achieving average one liter per square meter per day. Last year, we won the 2020 Bridge Hub Water Challenge, which secured a $100,000 investment on our commercialization journey. This year, we're in negotiation for commercial collaborations with stakeholders from the United Arab Emirates, as well as a global leader in paint material manufacturing. Currently, we have a paint and a process to apply it. Moving onward, we will need additional funding to build our team with engineers, product designers, and business developers in order to bring our proof of concept one step forward to a more efficient, more scalable, and well-tested commercial product. Our dream is to paint big buildings like this grand stadium and turn them into massive water generators. If you'd like to be one of the few pioneers grasping the future oil and gold, or if you want to know more about our technology, please speak to us at our booth. My name is Ming, and here in Aqua, we're getting water from air. Thank you. Well done, Ming, and well done to all the startups. Can we please give them another huge round of applause? Now, remember, please go talk to them at their demo booths. If you know anyone, even the faintest hint that they will be beneficial, please connect them. For that is the same for everyone online. Please book your one on one meetings with the startups. Now, tonight, we saw a wide array of ideas, and that is something we pride ourselves on here at the University of Sydney and in Incubate. Oop. Diversity, there we go. Whether that is a diverse range of ideas or diversity from within the team itself, this is one of our core strengths here at Incubate and what we offer the University of Sydney. Tonight, I'm just gonna to touch on how Incubate and the Innovation Hub are gonna improve our offering to the whole university ecosystem. Firstly, with our established and proven frameworks, the Proto Workshop Series. The goal in these workshops is to allow those with just a hint of an idea to learn the foundational steps to take that idea to market utilizing lean startup methodologies. If they would like to commit a little more, they can then join the ProtoX program. This is a 12-week part-time program full of just fortnightly workshops and the occasional one-on-one -on -one with mentors. The goal here is to take that idea and validate it through customer discovery and initial industry engagement. 
This is available in two streams, one for startups and one for researchers. ProtoX Research to Impact was first established by Dr. Narabab, Dr. Rabab Nasrallah. Rabab was head of research engagement here last year at Incubate, and she was also the first editor of the Australian edition of Innovation to Impact. Research to Impact has been utilized by numerous research teams, including Ed from Codex Research, who you saw tonight. Then, of course, there's the flagship accelerator. The goal here is to take those teams who have an understanding of their customers and help them develop an investable business model and a more investable team. Now, we're business agnostic. This is available to anyone from the University of Sydney, and that is because we want to tap into the strength of founders from diverse backgrounds. Some successes we've had. Bioscout recently just were awarded $627,000 from the Physical Sciences Fund. AMSL Aero just raised $6 million. Earth AI have raised numerous rounds. And Uprise were recently acquired. With our partners over the road at Sydney Knowledge Hub, you'll find Detected X. We're in our ecosystem before heading over to Sydney Knowledge Hub to continue their growth. They credit us to helping them transform that academic idea into a commercial reality. But the question still remains for Incubate. How do we remain at the forefront in the Australian startup community? How can we continue to make more investable teams? I was fortunate enough to speak to fund managers around the globe. Everyone gave the same answer. They're looking for technology oriented founders. They're looking for researchers with more business skills. The answer for us to this problem lies within the university. Thanks to a long-standing relationship with Professor Guy Ford, the director of the MBA program, we're piloting a part-time MBA student program with the ProtoX researchers and technology oriented founders. The goal here is to see if we can improve industry engagement, if we can improve customer validation, can we develop stronger business models now that there is someone with a background and strength in developing them? Can we potentially form, if they all like each other, more investable teams? This is our offering and one of our strengths. We are here to help with customer validation, business model generation, with our partners in the innovation network, helping us fill the rest of the pipeline for commercialization here at the University of Sydney. That is our commitment to excellence. It is our offer to all students, all researchers, all staff and all alumni of the University of Sydney. If you would like to know more, please scan the QR code up on the screen or go to incubate.org.au forward slash protox. Now up next, we have an alumni here just to wave his hands and say hello for four minutes. <laughs> what we're hoping to do here is show you that while startups, you know, Startups, they can be confusing, they might not work out. What we do here at Incubate is we focus on imparting an educational experience to the founders. And Dan is here to share his journey through Incubate and what successes he's had since being in the program. Please welcome Dan to the stage. Hi, my name is Daniel Vasliv. I'm the co-founder of Vector AI. And so as Ben mentioned, um, I was an online of Incubate back in 2016. Uh, and Nina invited me to come by and share a little bit about my experience of going through the program, what it's been, and what it's actually meant for us down the track. So I decided to start from the beginning. I first found out about Incubate when I started here at university. Um, my friend Jackie and I had just built our first app. We'd hit a million users in nine months. Um, but despite the growth and the ability to monetize it and kind of make it our job, we didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, we had no idea about the startup scene, and we were just kind of chugging along. And so we decided to apply for Incubate and see what we could learn and find out. And we did, and we got accepted. Um, and the next three months were a whirlwind for us. Um, we were 19, being introduced to all these incredible people who have done so much, who we were able to learn from, and all of a sudden we realized this is something that we could do beyond university. This isn't something that we've just created a little app. We can actually develop this further. 
And what was most inspiring for us is all of the passion that everybody showed. Being able to be around people that were driven and focused on building stuff and innovating, creating was infectious. And after we finished the Incubate program, although we didn't continue with the idea that we had in there, we decided, let's have another go. Let's build something else. And we did. And it was a bit of an overnight success. And by the, before I could think about it, in a few months' time, we had 6 million users. And actually, at the beginning, in the first 72 hours of it all, we were down in the basement, for those of you who remember it, basically not sleeping, keeping the servers up, because it just kept crashing. The users kept doubling and doubling and doubling. And when I was thinking about giving the speech, I just thought about, since that point, Pretty much everybody who's helped us on our journey today, I've probably met through Incubate. And how lucky it actually has been as a university to have access to such a great resource and people and mentors. And just we're so lucky for that and fortunate for that. And so, to tell you a little bit about what we're working on today um, at Vector AI. Well, I forgot to show that slide. Some happy pics from back then. Um, we're an API platform for vectors. It's a data type that you probably haven't heard of, but it's definitely being used by the services that you pay for today. So let's take Spotify as an example. They want to keep you on their platform for as much as possible. So they want to give you songs you want to listen to. So you keep listening to songs, discover new music. But how do they actually figure out what you like and what you're going to listen to next? Well, there's a few ways they could do that. Maybe they look at the genre and recommend you music in the same genre, but you know, that wouldn't be that great. Maybe they've built some really complex algorithm where they try to analyze the actual sound file and look at the peaks and troughs and the wavelengths. Um, but one can only imagine how difficult that would be to build and what kind of team you would require. Or they could use this new data type called vectors. And what that vector is able to do, it's able to capture information about the sound that you would as, about the song that you would as a human, the mood, the tonality, the lyrics, and everything that goes into that song that makes it so special. And then it means it's in a format that computers can now analyze. They can compare it so they can find the similarities, they can find the differences, and so now Spotify knows exactly what your music profile is, and then it knows exactly which song it should recommend to you. And Google do that as well. That's why their search is so good, because they use vectors. And we don't just have to do this with sound files. We can do it with any type of unstructured data, whether it's text, images, animations, Word documents, PDFs, you name it, we can do it. It might be some, some data just stuck in a data lake or on a SharePoint or on a Google Drive that's mis that can untap a huge amount of business value. But right now, it's only being used by the biggest and best companies in the world because it's incredibly difficult and expensive to build this. It can take a great team of engineers over a year to build a project that uses vectors as the backbone of it, um, and then countless hours and time required to maintain and upkeep it. And so that's where we come in. We make it as simple as an API that you can use in just a few days with all the enterprise features of security, stability, scalability, um, and speed. So we launched last year in September, and since then we're doing over 100 million weekly API requests. Where, <laughs> through our customers, we're reaching over 3 million users every month. Um, and some of our customers have doubled some of the key KPIs since implementing functionality, which was only possible with vectors. And we've been growing about, uh, our monthly revenue has been growing about 30% um, month over month. We've got some really exciting news to share. Can't quite yet, but in the meantime, if you guys know anybody who would be a great fit for any of these roles and want to work with a fantastic team on the cutting edge of what's possible with data, we'd love to hear from them. Reach out to me on LinkedIn, email, Twitter, wherever you can find me. I want to talk to you. Um, and if you want to hear a bit more about Vectors and what we're doing, because I don't have enough time right now to tell you about it, feel free to chat to me after, because I love Vectors. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Well done, Dan. You would think he's quite harmless if you see him during the week. He's usually riding around an on his electric scooter through the university. But it's amazing to see all this success that he has achieved over the past few years. Just to help me close up the event, I would like to invite Professor Richard Miles, the Pro Vice Chancellor for Education, Enterprise and Engagement to the stage. Richard. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, can we just start by just congratulating again the class of 16, of, of 16 for this amazing performance tonight? N not only amazing ideas, and I was completely convinced by all of them, but also just 
deadly convincing pitches as well. Really fantastically well done. Um, and, you know, I think that's, you know, it's been an amazing evening in that way. You know, in many respects, what we're seeing today is the best of what the university has to offer, both in terms of educationally and in terms of our research as well. And I'd like to thank, there's a few thanks that I need to deliver here. One is to all of our investors. Secondly, to all our external partners. Thirdly, to all our mentors that come in and do all of the work with all of these teams. And also, for all the members and the hard-working team in Incubate as well. You know, it's an extraordinary effort. These sort of events and these kind of activities don't, you know, you know really take a lot of work. So can we congratulate them all, please? I think one of the main reasons why I'm up here is to sort of reaffirm uh, the university's commitment, not only to incubate, but also to, to more broadly, to entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, you know, it's absolutely in our lifeblood. And obviously in the last year, our relationship with incubate has been renewed and strengthened. And the future is very, very bright. Now, there are a number of ways across, across a broader university which we're working in this area. One is to make sure that we have a really sort of coherent and powerful pathway through from all of the things that we're doing here through to commercialization. My colleague, Professor Judy Kearney, is basically working, leading a group, which is putting all of those things together. So that's going to be very, very important. The second thing is around education. We're absolutely 100% committed to innovation, not just in terms of entrepreneurship, but as a vehicle for basically to teach people, all of our students, those core skills, that scaffolding that you, we know that everybody needs to be successful, not just in terms of work and employment, but also in terms of life. And what do I mean by that? I mean critical thinking. I mean problem solving. I mean um, cultural competence. Perhaps more than anything else, resilience. One of the things that you, I noticed tonight, the number of times that people talked about resilience or didn't talk about resilience, but I'm sure there were moments of ups and sort of lots of downs too. And in many respects, all of these things that we see us doing tonight, all these, these groups have done, it's basically a great exercise in all of those core skills which lie at the heart of what a university needs to offer. Because a university that doesn't offer all of those, those sort of opportunities to basically help students and others to navigate an increasingly complex and interesting employment landscape is not going to do very well. So I think those are very important things. And the last thing I'll leave you with is this, is that today we had, a, um, we had what we call an industry and community project unit, which of course I, I helped to run, so of course I was going to uh, mention these. And these are basically experiential small group project units that we run with external partners. And this one was done with EY, and it was about the sort of post-COVID world, which is obviously a great topic. And Tanya Plebisek was there, and she sort of set as a sort of challenge towards the end about the university, and what that should look, what should our ambitions be? What's going to change, and what's going to change for the better? And I think one thing I notice is this, is we're becoming ever more external facing. And working with a much wider group of partners, and that's going to be absolutely essential for our success in the future. And more than anything, what is it that working together going to mean? It's going to basically mean serving, you know, and basically helping to solve the problems for the communities out there which we serve. And in many respects, Incubate and this event tonight is absolutely essential to that mission. So thank you very much. Now all please go and mingle. So thank you, Richard, and thank you, everyone, for attending here in person and online. Make sure you stick around, have some food, have some drinks, meet the startups, and as I said before, ask them the really tough questions. You'll be doing me a big favor. If you want to join the, the chats online via social media, please make sure you tag at Sydney Incubate and hashtag Sydney Incubate. Thank you very much.